At the time we taped this 90 days, another new aircraft in the McDonnell Douglas stable was nearing FAA certification, the MD-900 Explorer helicopter. The Explorer Development Program is a textbook case of listening to your customer and giving him what he wants. It's also a good example of the benefits derived from using a multidiscipline team in the design process. The Explorer is the first completely new commercial helicopter to be developed in a decade, and it incorporates a lot of new cost-effective technology, including the revolutionary NOTAR, no tail rotor system. The NOTAR system is available on two helicopter systems aircraft, the MD-900 and the smaller MD-520N. The MD-520N is basically a five-place, uh, single-turbine uh, helicopter. It weighs about 3,300 pounds in gross weight, and it's aimed for the police utility type of market. The MD-900 is a larger aircraft that's been specifically designed for the commercial helicopter market. It's twin engine. It uses NOTAR. It's 6,000 pounds. It creates a payload that will accommodate uh, eight passengers. It will accommodate large medical interiors. It will accommodate executive type interiors. So it's a much larger aircraft giving the operator much more versatility in his fleet. The NOTAR system is really several components. It's the circulation control tail boom, the direct jet thruster, which is the rotating thruster at the back of the aircraft, and the fan that provides air to both the boom and the thruster. The boom operates basically as a jet flap airfoil. By ejecting air out the side of the boom, it uses the energy of the main rotor wake to create any torque force, which is a lateral force. That lateral force is also augmented by the direct jet thruster, uh, which can provide force in either right or left and trim the aircraft and provides maneuver force. You get an increase in safety, uh, an increase in handling qualities, better handling qualities, uh, the elimination of moving parts, uh, the reduction in maintenance, uh, the whole life cycle cost of ownership drops dramatically. By eliminating the tail rotor, we have reduced the noise signature characteristic of the NOTAR to a third of comparable helicopters. It is the quietest helicopter in the world. Uh, aside from NOTAR, probably the next uh, most significant uh, and visible technology is the composite main rotor system, entirely made out of composite materials. It has eliminated bearings, fittings, lube fittings, grease fittings, uh, the parts count is 20% uh, of the equivalent uh, traditional helicopter rotor hub, which means cost saving to the, to the user, a reduced inventory, reduced maintenance, reduced inspection, longer lives. The, the blades are all composite materials, which allows us to design a very aerodynamic, efficient airfoil. We've taken the technology that's been developed over the last 20 years in our military aircraft business and applied that cockpit technology to the Explorer to provide the kind of use the customer would like. What we've done by that is created what we call the integrated instrument display system, which eliminates all the cautionary dials and gauges and makes a very compact, clean cockpit with one CRT that presents information on demand or by exception. It also monitors the health and the operation of the aircraft. Beyond the Explorer, uh, we would see the incorporation of even further advanced technologies. Uh, on the rotor itself, we're working on uh, rotor designs, the active flap control, where we can reduce the noise of the rotor even further relative to where we are today. Well, that's basically a flap at the trailing edge of the rotor that is modulated as the rotor spins to control the lift on the rotor so it's always at an optimum uh, configuration and eliminates a lot of the popping and the blade slaps and the and the wop 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 that a lot of people hear. Uh, we feel will have as big an impact on noise as the NOTAR did. The Explorer incorporates all the modern safety features available to 
to us today. Its crashworthiness exceeds FAA requirements. It has crashworthy seats, uh, crushing understructure. It has uh, a puncture-resistant bladder. Uh, it has um, increased visibility. It has a whole host of safety features all the way through it. The Total Explorer program is a program that's really been extraordinary in the speed by which it's, it's uh, gone through its paces. Uh, from initial designs, clean sheet of paper, to first product delivered this December will be a span of about five years. Normal aircraft development sequences are ten. From day one, we viewed the Explorer as a tool of our customers. Not so much as a helicopter, but as a business tool. So we went out and got businessmen that operate helicopters for a living to advise us as to what they wanted, the features they wanted in that tool. And that's what we call the blue team. The blue team consisted of people from all five market segments. And the market segments are law enforcement and public service, offshore oil, emergency medical service, what we call a part 135 commercial operator. Uh, and these people were all on our blue team. And there were also international representation on the blue team. We asked them the bottom line, what is it you're looking for the, in the Explorer? And this was a very gutsy thing to do because you don't ask people like that what they think and then not respond. And as a matter of fact, we did make significant changes in the aircraft based on customer input. Uh, and I think it, it says a lot about the, the management approach and the co-location of all the, the disciplines right from the very start. My job as the business development rep was really to be a customer advocate and make sure that the, the new technologies were not used just for the sake of new technologies, but that they made sense to the owner to reduce his costs or to increase his return on his investment. It's very unusual to have your marketing rep be a part of your change board. Any time I saw something going other than to the customer's benefit, all I had to do was write a design concern and everything stopped until it was resolved and it was usually resolved in the, in the customer's favor. If you look at the history of aircraft, the last big buying was done in 1979. That means by the year 2000, there will be over 4,000 aircraft that are over 20 years old. So the fleet out there is old, and even though the, the market itself is only growing at a modest rate of somewhere to 3 to 4 percent, uh, by the time you take that 3 to 4 percent growth and add to it the replacement factor, there's going to be a very good sizable market for this aircraft. As a result of us listening to the customer, the customers, those that were on the blue team are some of our best salesmen now, and they will tell you very openly that McDonnell Douglas listen, and if they don't like this aircraft, it's their own fault.